sits right here and you just go with your knife in here and take the natural part and just try to follow the natural and here is your fat that you want to take off good for sausage there you go Here's my fat, now I'm going on the other side because I just want to make sure I get as much as I can off. Salsa just, is just made of pig skin and fat? No, sausage just makes basically a mixture of fat and muscle, right? Oh, okay, yeah. So when it cooks, it's not dry. Yeah. So here you go, we got this out of the bag over there. Looks pretty similar, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing. Here again, that's also used sometimes for sausage. You just have to make sure when you do sausage uh, or uh, forced meat that you take that silver skin off because that stuff is really tough, right? Mm -hmm. So you can use it for sausage. This is also used for uh, short saute because it is, what you see on the loin part is we rarely do get it when you go shopping or anything like that. You do not get it with the bone in. Okay, um, only reason for the bone in would be if you want to do things like on a saw, for instance, pork French it, right? Cleans that up. You got the pork chop and debone our pork loin. Mm. Now, this is more what you get in the industry. Yeah. This will be when you go to it's already packed. Yeah, it's already deboned. Deboned. Here we go. Now, what he was talking about, the feather bones, they're right here. Those are the ones that are showing up right here and here, right? So we got to go behind that and take that hole in. But it's just a little bit easier when you go from this side and you take it down. Like that. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Here we go with the feather bones. Just basically, again, so is there an easy way to and see the marbleization and how it starts out going into the loin? And in here, you will see more muscles, the neck muscles kind of starting and ending, uh, kind of fizzling out into here in the back and getting into the loin. And here again, here we have our uh, um, ham. ham that still has some of our uh, uh, top round and even a little bit of the bottom around on there. Okay. okay. So now we got it, right? Yes. Now we got it. Back here, Good. So what I'm gonna do with this, I tell you honestly, for me, this is again here, like he said, a good roast, right? Good roast, could be a little bit more, but that could be a roast. Or again, for stew meat, wonderfully cut up. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. So <coughs> probably go ahead and take the first third here for a roast because it has so much fat in there and I'm going to cut that probably right here where it starts and now you can still see a little bit from the frontage here and then I'm going to cut a couple pieces off here because you see from the neck part where it starts out the neck here right See those different muscles from the neck muscles where it kind of holds the neck together and moving it left and right? These are the different muscles. A lot of marbleization, a lot of intramuscular muscular fat, which means what? Flavor. Lots of flavor, exactly. Lots and lots of flavor, right? So this is actually what I cherish a lot. Where it starts basically with our center loin steak cut, right? Or steak loin center cut. Steak. Now, 
a little bit awkward cutting me because you got standing on this side, but that's fine. I usually cut this about an inch, maybe an inch and a half. It's up to you how you want to do it. But these are wonderful steaks, about an inch. And you will see the further you get, the more, uh, the more, the less other muscle you will show up, right? And this is traditionally what we get. And we get that cut as, I'm just gonna turn it around, as scallopini, right? And then as scallopini, they get sometimes cut really thin, like this here, right? And then even pound it out. Uh, this solar skin here off a little bit, or basically it's just a, they call it fish out, right? Mm -hmm. That here, you can pull that off sometimes. And then what we want to do is we want to get the silver. We got the head on here, which is, you know, basically attached. And that silver skin goes into that a little bit like that. So we want to take that off because this is really something that you can't eat and it's really tough and it's undigestible. So we just go under that silver skin. You want to clean up that fat a little bit so you can expose that. Right? And then we want to go under the silver skin just lightly with a knife, pull that up so we can see the meat down there and try almost to get that silver skin that we can see our knife through. And then once the silver skin is gone, we're done. So then we see the next piece, just go under here again, like that, hold it up a little bit, and then just like that, really lightly pull it off till we get that silver skin off on the left, right and left hand side. It's easy to kind of see where it is by just moving it just like we did with the chicken and you can move right here up here is our kneecap and we use the weight right and in order to get this off, you know, I use the weight of that thing to hold me. And I'll just go straight from here. And with the skin on, it's a little tougher. Straight from here to over here. I try not to take too much off because I want as much meat as I can, of course, for the use of steaks or roasts and things like that. So you just go above the kneecap here, turn that baby around, and then just try to sever it right here. Now this is very high on collagen. Again, it's perfect for um, roasts or stew. There is very famous those are used a lot in Europe. I hope I got up there far enough. And then of course there's Okay, so now when I got it up here, I can go, I went a little bit too far down, but I just go in here. Should have been a little bit further, further up here. And then again, where it comes naturally apart, you can see where that sits in the socket here. I should have been maybe a half an inch a little bit further up, right? But uh, hey, and then it just severs like this. So, a little bit further down. Um, sometimes people cut that off because if you roast it, you want it not to be just fall the bone. And knowing the bone, how it comes, I know that I just need to cut around here and go in here. And it comes down. Down here is a little 
these And it's really hard to see when you don't stand right next to it. Again, another reason why, again, is why I'm staying so close to the bone is that my yield is uh, as high as possible. There's going to be some meat on that. And here I get into the ball joint, and in the ball joint, in there's a uh, that bone eh, actually inside inside here. How that <coughs> tenon runs through. Can you see that a little yeah. bit right here? Yeah. I'm gonna hold my knob right here, right? And that when I sever that, it comes loose. So I'll just go in here, and here we go. And now you can see the ball joint right here much better, right? Yeah. See the ball joint and that tenon in here holds into in here. So and then you can see go up here. It's going to be all again some stew meat. I'm going to take that off so you see how that bone actually looks. Here's a little top piece that comes up. So this is how it sits in, right? And that is usually attached to the hip right here, back here, which basically goes into the loin, into the rack, okay? So here, this is another bone piece that basically attaches. Good morning. That you, good morning that we want to follow. So right here, I gotta get to the skin. And then If you sever this correctly, you will have some cartilage that is still sitting on the other side. And that's like that. And that's where we naturally separate See that? Mm How -hmm. oh, it's nicely done. So we're really taking this here part. And then here we go straight through.
right down. Number two. So these are nice little roasts, right? If you want to use them for roasts. Now this here, they have to take out because this is actually what you talked about, about that fat that has that rancid taste, right? Mm -hmm. The gland. And then here. Oh, nice no, not. Now I don't need you guys to be as sufficient I just want you guys to make sure that you know where's what. Here's a little bit on the top again that we use for stew meat. Of course you have to clean it up a little bit. So this is actually the flank steak that you can use, right? And you can use that wonderful for stew meat. Let's take the top round. Here we we'll take the left part off. Here we go. A little bit the solar skin. <clears throat> How much of that fat in between there is actually the gland and just it's but yeah it's most of the time is that that kind of looks like grizzly like that okay that stuff you want to get off and it gets tough of course there's a lot of waste as you can tell um not get those skin off okay most pork your shoulders or butts or um, hams come skin off. So what that means is like that you don't have to go to, through that ordeal. What I'm doing right now, you already have skin off, fat off. But what I want to show you guys, if you get it already skin off, it's early guys. Usually I get that off in one piece. It's a Friday, it's okay. It is a Friday. It's a Monday. Yeah. So, um, who's got a dog? I have a dog. You have a dog? Yes, I do. Good. Yep. So you got the skin on, drying that, drying that skin off, drying that out or whatever, and then using it as a uh, dog treat is always a good thing. Right on that one muscle, is it, it all cooks the same way, okay? If you want to trim them down so they look a little bit better, you can certainly do that. Use okay, this for stew meat. That's for stew meat. But again, it's all one muscle. That's what the great thing is. Is you can kind of cut decent steaks out of it. Sound good? Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Good. Where you know a lot of that stuff gets used for sausage meat if they break the ham apart, okay? If they don't break it apart, of course, the whole ham is used for either way roast, so things like that. Um, so we're gonna cut that stuff up a little bit for stew meat. Um, there is, of course, we wanna take, take this here out. All right, and then we'll take the skin off and then we can cut this up into uh, a roast or a stew meat too, small roasts, things like that. So there's a lot of stuff coming out of pork, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here so when we they got. do like a whole ham, do they just, do they take the bone out? Like, and yes. then they keep it like that? Yeah, uh, that's what they do. They basically just take the bone out cool. and that's uh, what you get for the ham. Uh, a lot of those things apart, this is where actually the loin would sit 
and here you they cut it off and I told you where there's a little piece of the uh, shoulder blade that was cut off into the part of the rack right mm -hmm. so that was left in there that little piece of that was like rounded a little bit mm -hmm. that actually comes off of here that was that's where it was cut off so that shoulder blade runs in here sits basically really like this in here and they cut off that piece and it goes in here and then in here the shoulder blade sits actually in our back spine part and then you see here basically where the knuckle sits in that bowl right here gotcha. right so this is actually where then my front hock or my yeah my ham hock up front is up front here right so that's where that is connected that was where the ham hock let me grab one real quick sits right here and then well that actually would be a little lesser right like that here right gotcha. so we got our Boston butt, and what else? Picnic, Picnic shoulder, mm -hmm. right? So, most of the time here, the same thing is used for roast, pulled pork, things like that, right? Uh, barbecue, pork, whatever you want to do. Sometimes they even cut this here into, with the bone, into strips like that, and you get your uh, short rib cuts, right? That are slow roasted and things like that. Uh, so there's multiple cuts being done out of it. What I want to do is I just want to go ahead and we'll take the ones that we have open, uh, take those apart to show you a little bit. Again, this is a wonderful meat again for uh, shoulder blade basically sits in here. And I'm just going to take this out here. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to see from the other side. I know. Just cut it for the purpose. Here you can see really how this is almost a leaf, right? And then there's goes up a little bit there's a little when you have that leaf there's a little bone here that comes up comes up down on the other side, of course. Turn it around. Goes up. And here you go. See that leaf? So this is the bone that, that I was talking about coming up like this here. So you go in, you go up, you go down, and it comes down and goes this. And this is the leaf that sits Another little piece sits like this here that they cut into the thing. So this is our shoulder, right? That basically sits in the socket right here. Like I said, that also, if you have a boneless shoulder, can be a nice rose. It really gets broken apart, right? Uh, not a lot of people uh, use these individual parts. It's mostly used for sausage hams again and uh, 
yeah, small things, smoked or whatever, stuff like that, uh, roasted in a hole in, in, in its hole in tenant. Uh, again, you got a lot of things like these, uh, and here you can see it a little bit better, the glands that are in here that are really bitter that you don't want to use. And of course, you know, my blood vessels that uh, I want to make sure that I don't get too much in there. Um, it's a lot of fatty parts uh, that I can't use for uh, the purpose of stew meat or whatever, or um, sausage. Um, it requires a lot of taking it apart and uh, a lot of um, work to get the individual muscles separated to make sure that I don't get all that cartilage in my sausage, things like that. Um, but I'm showing you. You're just cutting along the bone like you did for the I just thing. did lengths the bone. Uh, oh, I forgot to tell you, is when you got the back part, you don't want to cut it from your back part because you here again, you're getting through the muscles. You want to make sure that you get it in between, well, they call it nut and all that stuff. I'm not going to get into details. <coughs> but you want to cut it in between the cartilage and see where your uh, um, vessels run. And then you get almost here again, you can see naturally to the bone. So here's, right, uh, it comes almost off, off by itself. Uh, of course, you have to go a little bit through here. So not too many fabricated cuts out of this part here, um, just simply out of the fact that it is very small parts. And those parts I use, again, mostly for stews or roasts. Just, just making sure you guys see a little bit of the bones that's in here. And as you can see, you use a lot of your tip of the knife because yeah. you don't want to get too long cuts out of it. And here they left the top part on here, which usually gets, they cut it usually a little bit closer towards the knuckle so you can get that knuckle off really easy. Now I got this meat part here. Okay, so a little, a lot of blood vessels still in here. Usually that stuff is a little bit more taken out. I'm just more worried that you're hurting the like, no. And then usually it gets taken apart in those different muscles that all have the small nut, the, the, the and you got the big nut right here. So there's different names for it. We'll just take that whole thing apart and then, you know, usually then you cut it into pieces for stew and things like that. 
or for sausage, mainly, mainly used for sausage, ground meat. Now, when I talk about ground meat, I'm not only talking about ground for burgers, but I'm also talking about... If you're lucky, you get to even uh, split the uh, feather bone up here uh, in half, and then you have really half and half, and that's the good part. As you can see here, the feather bone is not here. They took it off, which we can do too. But what I want to do is I want to show you how to get this thing apart. Now, it's not easy using one of those here and uh, splitting it in half. First of all, you don't want to use a saw too long, okay? Especially you don't want to saw through meat. Because what you're doing is you're basically taking bone and marrow, bone, that you kind of spread into the meat. You really just want to make sure that you split the bone, okay? So, we'll just go ahead in the center here, without cutting your fingers off. Yeah, you're doing that. <laughs> I'll try, but I'm terrified of that. And as you can tell, there's already that grinding coming off here, right? Yeah. And that's stuff that you don't want to get too much in your meat, okay? So, we want to see this here. Once you get in here, you get into the marrow, all right? Hello? Mm -hmm. Do you want a towel? To no. under a towel might be good, yeah. Usually, like I said, you take the bandsaw. There you go. Good call, good call. I wouldn't have thought of it if you didn't use it for the um, shoulder or the shoulder. stay close to the feather bone. Now, once you have it separated here, you can separate it. There you go, on the feather bone. So we go with just like the chicken, remember the mm -hmm. keel bone? Mm -hmm. Just go in the middle here. And stay alongside as good as possible. sure that you all have your loins still attached to the bones okay and like I said of course this happens see this mm -hmm. sure 
there's number one. And number two comes out of here. Same thing like we had on the port. Mm -hmm. We've got a little bit of our shoulder blade on here that we want to cut out. Shoulder blade here, a little bit of shoulder blade here. That even is cut a little bit deeper. Okay, so now cutting this into chops and Frenching them is one thing, but you can do also, of course, a rack, right? Mm -hmm. So like a lamb rack that you roast in the hole of it and basically just uh, peel a little bit off the flap, which is, this is the cap, right? That cap, I leave a little bit on there when I do a roast because I just want the fat to baste it. So I'll just take about two inch or an inch off, depending how much, uh, how much they cut off of the rack itself, right? Mm -hmm. And here you go, there's not a whole lot on here. It's a lot of fat, right? Mm -hmm. And here, this here, you can leave on when you stand it up like that, like a roast, right? Mm -hmm. And then comes the whole Frenching part. If you want to take a little bit more off, we can probably here, but you don't want to take too much off because like I said, you want to... So, here we go. And then we'll go ahead and just go and French those. Exactly. Is farther down, it looks like? This is farther down, definitely. Um, you say it's two inches down? Like Go ahead. Three. Um, do you take the spinal cord out, too? We'll do that. Okay, I was curious. <laughs> yeah. We'll get that. So, we'll go all the way, and then, usually, we'll go right here in the back here, stroke it a little bit on, and then sometimes what's better is using a little bit more stirring knife, or even a paring knife, and just go, once you got it back here. And this is what you get to do today. That's why it's expensive. That is very really expensive, yeah. The labor expensive. want is your meat to separate from your um, bone because if you separate too much of it it's gonna fall off literally fall off. so here again here go I go even a little bit deeper do the same story of cleaning up Frenching it and go this far down here same thing okay Right.
good as you can. Right, fringing it, all those bones. And then usually we take the silver skin off right here. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be really, really careful because we don't have a lot of meat, right? So we wanna make sure that we get as much as we can out of this. Now, I don't go all the way to the top because like I said, I want this to be attached. Then on here, I have a little flap that I leave on here too, because that's where it goes towards my neck and I've got multiple bones. Here you can just see one fillet, right? Or one uh, muscle, right? And then here, it's multiple muscles on top. That's where my neck sits. Again, my neck goes into here with multiple muscles and then down here, I just have my loin, just like we had on the pork, remember? Mm -hmm. So it is pretty similar to any other animal basically that has uh, four legs and a hoof or whatever. <laughs> okay, so we clean that all up. We leave that fat part on here. So that fat part here, down here, all that fat part holds my foot. If I would take that off, that whole thing would come down and fall down, okay? So I need this to hold it up a little bit, and then I can cut my, uh, my, my chops out of it. And I always gotta check that, of course, when I cut my chops, that they're the same size each and all the way through. So when I go in here, I wanna make sure that I don't stay too far. Now, what a lot of places do is those double chop cuts, mm -hmm. right? Where they maybe a little bit more whack. Okay. Of course, here we go. Got my second. Well, that's the reason why that they saw that one thing off here. Hmm. You got two. Yeah, well, it wasn't on purpose. <laughs> that's okay. Accidents happen. <laughs> they do. The second one's shorter, so it that's is. probably why you didn't see it. There we go. Again. Of course, those need to be cleaned. Now, um, see what I'm saying about that falling off here? Yeah. That usually holds it on here. So I'm just pressing down a little bit too hard on here. But this is what you want to make sure that that fat holds on here a little bit. like this like that and here comes my ultimate frenching would it be easier to french them before you cut them all off or well yeah yes okay yeah i mean it is easier actually when you got them cut off because uh, you can, turn, you can them. turn them and you can right. handle them a, bit, a little bit better but what it is at the same time what happens is like you're handling that fillet in the back there a lot and it, and, it, and it might, yeah, it makes makes it a little loose. But then here, that's pretty. So this is would be your pretty one, right? So mid stage, mid stage, beginning stage, all the way in the beginning, right here, mm -hmm. right? Sure. Sure. Sound good? Yeah. So this is that. Now sometimes they do have a little bit, but you get the eight rack, right? Mm -hmm. And the eight rack 
lets it easily split in four little pieces. Then they get seared off and then sometimes get served like this, right? Yeah. And you got your oh. seared off. Yeah, over a roasted vegetable. Over a roasted vegetable, polenta, mashed, mashed potatoes, potatoes oh, yes, blah, 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 whatever you want to do, okay? Yes. So that's your double cut. That's what we're going to do on the dish here. So this is basically what you're going to do with that. Can you hold that in mind till we're done? Yes, Because then I'm going to... Uh, you can roast it like this, there is nothing wrong with it, okay? But then you have to debone it when you get it to the to the uh, table or whatever. Easy way to do it is to debone it forehand, beforehand, and then you can insert inside, again, your herbs and your garlic and all these seasonings and blah, 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 and then roll it up and then stuff it and then do a lamb roast out of it. Just like we did in the net with that pork over there, right? So here again, you got the same story. We got our... Uh, um, spine bone on there again, right? Which is the rack bone here in the back, right? Sitting right here that actually should be still on the spine, but it, it is in here with a little knuckle sitting still in here. And you will see that there's a knuckle sitting in here with all that bone in the back there that is actually from your hip. Understand? <clears throat> so we're doing the whole thing just like we did with the pork, but the good thing is like pork is a little bit bigger, so you could see a little bit better. So now we're doing just the whole taking it apart. And here comes my knuckle again and it sits in here like that all right see that mm -hmm. same thing in there is a tendons that you got to break loose first and here you go can you see it for sure all right it's so what you want to break loose we want to have if possible all the meat <laughs> that sits on here with my roast so I don't have too much stew. I have more roast than stew because I will have some stew meat from the, in some cases you call it stelts, which is basically this up here front, which is, and remember that here's a little bone that comes up and goes down. That little knuckle here always is the one that people forget. It's like almost like a little knuckle again. All right, so here we go. And the good thing on this here is like that uh, it tells you by the veins already where you got to cut. There's three, one, two, three. So you take the one that is the closest in the middle. And again, you can almost take your finger and kind of push it a little bit in there, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to go ahead and sever just right straight down, and then you hit the bone right here, right? When you hit the bone, you go all the way up as far as you can to make sure that you get the most roast out of it. And again, we stay on the bone. Inside, and then we go Right, a little bit so expose that. Now the thing is here, the <clears throat> shin bone of the uh, lamb goes way further up. It goes this far up and then the bone is down here. So when you cut the shin bone out, you have to go probably in here. But I don't want to cut too much meat and waste too much meat away. So I'll go ahead around the shin bone and leave the, the kneecap leave the kneecap still on there, mm. okay? So you can see the kneecap right here. See that? Yeah. I leave it on there because that I'm just gonna cut out when I'm done. But if I cut in there from here, I'll cut too much meat off. Yeah, you can't yeah. see. Uh, so that's the reason why. So here we go. I set that all free. Once I got it set free, can easily 
clean it much easier. Grab around it. Try not to lose too much meat. And here you go. You can <laughs> see it and feel it. We just got to go down here a little bit. There's another tendon in that one. Yes, there is. <clears throat> and they sit on the side here, those tendons. Okay, so now it comes out fairly easy. I go in between because, of course, there's another bone down here. Mm -hmm. Go in between here. There's that tendons. Can you see it in here? Yeah. Right in here? Yeah. Cut through that. Once I'm cutting through, that thing comes hmm. easily off, okay? Yeah. So, oh. here's another bone. <laughs> and the bone. And here we go. Now, again, like I said, we want to gain as much meat on our roast as we can. I'll try not to go just straight down here. I'll try to kind of go a little bit in a slander. Of course, there's going to be meat down here on an, uh, on our uh, hawk, right? Which is uh, the stealth. But here, this is, that's the meat. Now, in here, same thing. Uh, we want to get that, uh, Gland? the glands and actually that fat part that builds around the gland a little bit out. This is the stuff that makes you kind of and I told you about that high temperature melting point of uh, um, lamb, right? Yeah. Lamb fat. Uh, that's the stuff that a lot of people go like, ooh, uh, ooh, tastes weird or whatever, or it's kind of sticking to my gum or whatever, stuff like that. This is what I want to just <laughs> lose a little bit, take it out, take the blood parts out a little bit, and make sure that I have it all exposed. Here's my my shin, right? My uh, the, kneecap. the kneecap. Now I'm just gonna go around here and really easily take it out gotcha. without losing too much meat. Again, remember, meat is money, and that's what I normally lose. So kneecap. Here we go. Oops, no, not you. <laughs> here we go. So now I can go ahead, rub it with salt, pepper, and garlic, and.